Have you been driving all day pulling your camper and you're exhausted? Just want to get a good night's sleep but don't want to spend 30, 40, or 50 bucks just to pull over and park? Well, you know what? I'm the same way. And for years I had an anxiety and didn't know whether it was safe or how to go about staying at a Walmart. Well, you know what? I got over that. And I'm going to tell you how you too can stay for free on this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back, everybody. Before we get started, if you haven't joined the Travels with Delaney caravan, you can do it for free just by clicking on that subscribe button and then hit that bell right beside of it so you get notifications of all of our upcoming videos. We put out a new video every Monday and sometimes we put out a second video midweek. All right, let's get back to this week's topic. So for probably 10 years, I heard about staying at Walmarts, but I'd never done it. Always a little nervous, just not sure whether it was safe or whether it was legal and just had a lot of questions. Well, guess what? In the last year, I figured it out and boy, am I glad I did. But there's a few rules before we get started. Number one, understand Walmart is not a campground. It is a place for you to park and get some sleep and then leave the next morning. Number two, you always need to call ahead and make sure that it's okay. Now, we have found that there are some places, Walmart's general policy is they welcome RVers, but the problem is in some of the cities where Walmarts are located, there are ordinances against overnight RV parking. So that's why we always call ahead. But let me quickly go through the steps. Um, of how we do it. So I always start by figuring out how far I want to drive and then once I know roughly where I want to stop, I use the Allstays app. Uh, I like the Allstays app because in addition to having Walmarts, you can find Cracker Barrels, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, all these places that potentially are places that you can park overnight for free. And then once you find a, let's say a Walmart, roughly where you want it, just click on that and it will bring up past reviews where people will tell you what luck they've had. Now, even if you see, or at least it's the way I do it, even if I see that recently people have stayed there, I still will always call ahead of time just to verify. And it's real simple. You pick up the phone, you get customer service, and I always just ask the question of, do you still allow overnight parking for RVs for one night? And that's a key. Again, it's not a campground. You, you're not supposed to be camping out here for days at a time. And typically, the person that answers the phone, um, the two answers that I typically have received is um, number one, absolutely, and then I always follow that up is, where would you like us to park? And they typically will give you very specific locations. Here at the Walmart in Denton, Texas, they ask that we park close to the Petco over here and uh, near the Garden Center and typically as far away from the building as uh, possible. The second response that I have gotten has been, um, we don't have a problem with it. However, there are ordinances in the city and so we can't guarantee that you won't get a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Now, I'm not gonna risk that. Um, even when they tell me they haven't had that issue, I'm just not gonna risk it. And then the third that I've had is, unfortunately, no, we do not allow overnight parking due to local ordinances. And they just come out and say they don't allow it. So that's the first thing I do after I find the one. And then once I know where I'm going, we just show up. Now, typically what I'll do is if we get in early enough, one of the things we like to do, like tonight, um, we were here a little after eight. We needed to stretch our legs, so we went in the store, walked around, and we actually made a couple purchases. Now, we just didn't buy stuff to buy stuff, but it was things that we needed, and I feel like that's a good way to give back to Walmart for them allowing us to park here overnight and saving me potentially 30, 40, or $50. Um, we typically try to arrive a little bit later in the evening. This is actually an early night for us. Typically, I would say we don't get in until 10 or 11 on a normal Walmart. March stay. The other thing is we try to be out of here um, no later than 8 a.m. just so before they start getting busy we're not using up spaces. Uh, another pointer is if you have a small rig, now if you have a big rig you're gonna have to park in multiple spaces. You just have no option. But with Carl back here I can actually, and I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it, I can actually pull Carl through two spaces with the forerunner attached. So I'm only actually taking up two spaces while we're out here. So I try to just minimize my footprint on their parking lot. And that's really about all there is. Now, I think there's a few common courtesies we should all recognize that's important. Um, number one, like I said, it's, it's not a campground. 
So you're not going to find me getting out the par barbecue grill. You're not going to find me setting up my chairs, my awning. Oh yeah, that's right, Carl doesn't have an awning. But if he did have an awning, we would not be putting the awning out. We wouldn't be putting out our carpet. Um, you know, again, we just want to kind of blend in for the evening. We don't want to be real obvious. Now, I have heard the question about slide outs. When we had our fifth wheel, um, we would have had to have put out at least our bedroom slide, and I think that's okay. I see people doing that. Um, but for instance, our living room slides we could have left in, and I definitely would have left those in. So we don't have that problem again because Carl has no slide outs. All right, that is how simple it is. Um, my next goal at some point soon is to try a Cracker Barrel. I've had a couple RVers tell me they love the Cracker Barrels. The same rules apply, call ahead of time. They usually have RV parking. Um, and there, if you get in early enough, you can have dinner, get up the next morning and have a nice breakfast. And it's a great way, again, to thank them. So, all right, if any of you have done this, make sure you comment down below, share your stories with all of our other subscribers about your successes and what you like about it or what you dislike about it. And, um, and if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask those as well. So until next time, I'm Patrick, and we'll see you on down the road. Good night.